BBOR Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. And hello everybody, today is Wednesday, another Ripper Wednesday. Every Wednesday on the channel I do a segment about Jack the Ripper, and in this episode I will be discussing the suspect, Frederick Bailey Deeming, one that I've never covered before on the channel. Jack the Ripper was a serial killer that operated in England in 1888, and whatever happened before or after that is still part of the mystery. Frederick Bailey Deeming is a different type of Ripper suspect because, firstly, he was indeed a convicted murderer. However, his whereabouts at the time of the Jack the Ripper crime spree in the quote-unquote Autumn of Terror were somewhat questionable. In addition to Ripper Wednesday, I also do a segment every Monday about the Zodiac Killer, and somebody just wrote into the channel, and they were saying that geographic positioning should be very important, meaning that somebody's location should be determined prior to naming them as a suspect. And in the Zodiac case, that is absolutely a strong point. And most of the Zodiac killer suspects that I discuss on this channel can be placed in the San Francisco Bay Area at the time of the Zodiac murders. However, with the Ripper mystery, it is absolutely all across the board. I mean, we have some famous suspects like Thomas Neal Cream, who was incarcerated in America at the time, Michael Ostrog, who was in France at the time, and they are still regarded as Jack the Ripper suspects, even though they were either not in the country or almost certainly they were not in the country at the time of this crime spree. With Frederick Bailey Deeming, it is a little bit more questionable because, as we'll see from an early, early introduction into the story, he is somewhat of a rover. He doesn't stay in one place for very long, so his exact movements and whereabouts could be very difficult to pinpoint for the year of 1888. To help us out, I'm going to go over to an article that was written by Barry O. Jones discussing the life and times of Frederick Bailey Deeming. Firstly, he was born in 1853, so that would mean that he would have been around 35 years old at the time of the Jack the Ripper crime spree. And I do think that that is somewhat of a plausible age for the Ripper. Some Jack the Ripper suspects are in their 70s, and some of them are a lot younger. And John Douglas created a profile for Jack the Ripper. He put the age as possibly around age 30. They're about just going off of memory. So, I mean, I think that late 20s, early to mid 30s would be totally reasonable for someone who committed the Whitechapel murders, and specifically referring to the murders of Polly Nichols, Annie Chapman, Liz Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Kelly. Some other background info on Frederick Bailey Deeming is that he was married at least three times, going through the list here that has been shared in the article by Barry O. Jones. His first marriage was to Marie James, and that took place in 1881. His second marriage was to a woman named Helen Matheson, but at this time he was still married, so this was actually an illegal marriage, and it just says, though, he was not prosecuted for bigamy in that case, but he was already married at the time, and then he was married to a woman named Emily Lydia Mather. Now, this will become very important because, as previously stated, Frederick Bailey Deeming was a convicted murderer, and he was responsible for the murder of his own family, what we would call a family annihilator. And I'm going to jump ahead here in the article by Barry O. Jones. So the long story short is, Frederick Bailey Deeming is going all over the world, committing crimes, like fraud, being a con man, and I do mean all over the world, not only in England, but also in South America. After his second marriage, he fled to Uruguay, and he has also been located in South Africa, but he's most famous for his crimes in Australia, and I'm going to read that right here. On March 3rd of 1892, a disagreeable smell was found at 57 Andrew Street in their city in Australia, and this led to the discovery of Emily Mather's body, a banquet invitation from Rainhill named in the name of A.O. Williams was also found in the house. On March 11th, Deeming was arrested at Southern Cross, Western Australia. Investigations of his Rainhill activities begun, and on March 16th, the recently cemented floor of the Denham Villa where he lived in the kitchen was dug up, and the bodies of Marie James and their four children were found. As previously stated, he murdered his family, as well as another woman that was close to him. Deeming was returned to Melbourne by April 1st, and after a two-day inquest, 
on Emily Mather, Dr. J. E. Neal, the acting coroner, committed him for trial. He was subject to enormous, even frenzied vilification, and all of Australia was affected by the mass hysteria of demania. He has Fred Frederick Bailey deeming demania. His counsel, William Forlong and Alfred Deakin, sought a month's adjournment to enable evidence of deeming psychiatric history to be secured and allow the hysteria to abate. Sir Henry Hodges granted one week. The trial took place on the 28th of April and le finished on the 2nd of May of 1892. Deeming, who was tried under the name of Williams, relied on a defense of insanity, but the psychiatric evidence of J.W. Springthorpe and J.Y. Fishbourne was inadequately presented, although it seems clear that he was epileptic. The jury speedily convicted Deeming, and he was sentenced to death. On May 9th of 1892, the Executive Council confirmed the death sentence, and on the 19th, the Judicial Committee, Privy Council, refused to leave appeal. Deeming was hanged. Prior to his death, he had written an autobiography, which was destroyed, and I wish we could have read that. But some of the points about Frederick Bailey Deeming is that, number one, he is someone who experienced deviant behavior during his entire life. In some other sources, particularly the article from casebook.org, they stated that he had a very bizarre relationship with his mother, and if you were to read that on Wikipedia, it might say something very, very general. But the case book article expanded upon that by saying that he had a very close and direct relationship with his mother, and once she passed away, he began to feel very distraught. This could have affected his relationships toward women. All of Jack the Ripper's victims were female, and they were either mutilated or cut very badly. And not to mention, there are some similarities in the way that the victims in Frederick Bailey Deeming's murders were committed. Four out of the five Ripper victims, they were strangled first. The only victim that was not strangled was Liz Stride, and they believe that that took place because the killer was interrupted, and he was actually trying to strangle her and disembowel her, but he either heard the sound of a passing carriage, or perhaps he just was interrupted in a different way, and he slashed her throat and decided to flee and look for another victim, and that's why he murdered Catherine Eddowes on the same night that Liz Stride was murdered. This was on September 30th of 1888. So, with Frederick Bailey deeming, he strangled his family members during part of the execution process. And he was a suspect that was actually named by the papers. And to show you how global things are, even the New York Times is talking about how this guy, Frederick Bailey deeming, could have been Jack the Ripper. Now, at first, if you had presented me with that, I would have been like, Wow, you know, that's really shocking. It's, people have given this story some strong consideration. But then I remember that the media has a history of naming Ripper suspects that are not always very credible. For example, in 1894, Thomas Cutbush is named as Jack the Ripper by a publication called The Sun, and I absolutely think that he was not Jack the Ripper. I think that he was a different type of... Um, well, I just think he... I think that he was a deranged, mentally ill individual who was just not responsible for the Whitechapel murders. Thomas Cutbush committed some minor assaults and couldn't even get away with those, so being the Ripper is somewhat questionable. But even if we go back to 1884 and 1885, there was a vicious set of serial murders that took place in the United States that are attributed to an unknown serial killer called the Midnight Assassin. And again, after the Ripper crimes took place in 1888, in London, already there's talk about how is Jack the Ripper the Midnight Assassin? Was there an American who moved from the United States to England to commit the Whitechapel murders? Just because the media latches onto a suspect does not really give any credibility to the theory. Now, if you do go through the article on casebook.org, you will find something that is so much more valuable than whose opinion do you want to listen to? Which source do you want to trust? And they state something. Again, this is not this is not stated as an opinion on casebook.org. They're stating that absolutely Frederick Bailey Deeming could not have been Jack the Ripper because he was in South Africa at the time of the murders. And I haven't found an exact source that would corroborate that with a hundred percent. And I'm gonna give you 
my honest take on the subject about why there's this type of bizarre discrepancy. And I think it is that Frederick Bailey Deeming was in Australia, and then he was sailing from Australia to South Africa. He did indeed go ashore, and then he gets back on the ship and then returns to England. Now, I think that they're simply making the assumption, or they're doing it based on calculations. Maybe we should use the word prediction. They predict that at the time that his ship should have um, arrived at these ports, it would have been outside the realm of possibility for him to have been Jack the Ripper. But again, I'm not extremely impressed by that because that just means that it's possible or it's a deduction or, as I said, prediction, but it doesn't seem like they know that 100% any of the critics of this theory. And to share some additional reasons about why people think that Frederick Bailey Deeming could have been Jack the Ripper, theory would go like this, that he contracted a venereal disease from a woman, and that allowed him to, or that made him have animosity toward women, plus experiencing that bizarre relationship with his mother. And as you heard in the article by Barry O. Jones, it's quite possible that he did indeed have epilepsy, and the defense that Frederick Bailey Deeming was creating was just that he experienced epileptic seizures, and that made his behavior go awry, not guilty by mental disease or defect. And, as stated, it seems quite possible that there was some truth to the epilepsy. Being very honest, I don't believe the insanity defense for a second. That just sounds like something that people would say to try and get out of trouble. I should point out that he is not the only epileptic Jack the Ripper suspect. Hyam Hyams is another widely discussed suspect, and that was also the explanation that he only experienced the fits of mania around the times of his epileptic seizures, or at the very least, he would have had his behavior altered because of them. With Frederick Bailey Deeming, that's also rather similar. And another piece of evidence in favor of Frederick Bailey Deeming being Jack the Ripper is that he allegedly made confessions to people in prison that he was Jack the Ripper. But I have to take a different standpoint. I think that Frederick Bailey Deeming is somewhat of a weaker suspect. Number one, unconfirmed whereabouts. Number two, he seems like a liar, a con man, somebody who is committing fraud in different parts of the world. You heard about that fake marriage that he had, and then he runs off to Uruguay. He's someone who's trying to cheat, trying to deceive. Maybe he genuinely did say that he was Jack the Ripper when he was in prison. That's what liars do. They continue to lie, even during very, very dark times. It's all about manipulation. Number three, differences in the way that the crimes were committed. The bodies of the victims were buried under the floor. Jack the Ripper did no such thing. Jack the Ripper left the bodies of the victims exactly where they were. So you might be thinking, well, I mean, a couple of years have gone by. Maybe the Ripper has evolved somewhat. I mean, I just have to call a spade a spade and look at the facts. Different types of crimes. And my honest opinion, as opposed to looking at the facts, is that Frederick Bailey Deeming was simply labeled as a Jack the Ripper suspect because he committed a very horrific crime. Family annihilation. He murdered his own wife and children. And people were very bothered by that. So they were thinking that somebody so selfish and vicious had to have been Jack the Ripper. And you even heard from the article as well that there was this type of mass hysteria and his own legal defense is trying to put an end to it. But all in all, I think it's a bunch of bad ideas that came into one and that Frederick Bailey Deeming was not Jack the Ripper. But I would love to know your take on the subject and anything that you've heard in this episode here. Please share anything you want in the comments section down below. And if there's a Jack the Ripper suspect that you'd like to hear about, you can put your requests in the comments section. You can also contact me at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. And the email address is posted in the description box. But you can also get my personal Facebook and the Instagram page, blackboxnet88 over on Instagram. And also feel free to tune in on Monday for Zodiac Monday, talking about the Zodiac Killer. And on the weekends, I've been releasing audio books. I've written two books, Killer on a White Horse and Down the Dark Lane. You can listen on YouTube 100% for free. And soon I will be releasing the third book, which is called White Horse Strong. 
And yes, all of these have a story that is going to be somewhat connected. The final story in Down the Dark Lane is the sequel to Killer on a White Horse, and White Horse Strong will be the third one. But I invite you to check out some of the links in the description box, and I want to know what you think about Jack the Ripper. What do you think about a suspect like Frederick Bailey Deeming, who has all of these frequent marriages, and he's also a liar and a cheat and a family annihilator? But was he Jack the Ripper? Please give your take in the comments section. That's all for me now. Until next time.